All right, so uh, hi, my name is Landon Houck. Uh, I'm technical lead for Marcom University programs here at NXP Semiconductors. Uh, and today I'm gonna go over some of the basics of can V1 and C using the LibCanard library. So first we're gonna go over um, some of the basics of UAV CAN, uh, UAV CAN messages, and DSDL, or uh, Data Structure Description Language. So first of all, uh, what's UAV CAN? UAV CAN is a modern open communication protocol for vehicles such as uh, unmanned aircraft, spacecraft, robots, drones, and more. So UAV CAN stands for Uncomplicated Application Level Vehicular Computing and Networking. Kind of a mouthful, but um, yeah, it is what it is. And it's uh, it's a protocol for a decentralized peer network um, where each peer or node has a unique numeric ID. So there's no host machine like in a CAN bus. Uh, so therefore there's no single point of failure. Um, UAV CAN uh, wants to be as robust as possible. So UAV CAN uses messages to send and receive data over various transports such as CAN, Ethernet, serial, and more. Um, but disclaimer though, uh, the main theme of this presentation is uh, using the CAN bus, so we won't go into specifics on other transports. Um, I included the UAV CAN logo because I think it actually describes UAV CAN quite well. Uh, think of each letter as a node, with the letter being its unique identifier uh, or node ID. And each node can reach all other nodes in the distributed network uh, by sending UAV CAN messages. So the foundation of UAV CAN falls upon sending and receiving UAV CAN messages between nodes. So message files are defined similarly to UORB or ROS messages that you'll see uh, when you use PX4 today, um, with each field having a data type and a name. Uh, for instance, uh, in the heartbeat message, we have a few different fields. Um, and within the socket can canard example uh, application that I'm gonna show you in this presentation, uh, you're gonna wanna keep an eye on the uptime, the health, and the mode fields. So each message has a port ID associated with it. For instance, with heartbeat, um, the port ID is 7509. Um, and this port ID is used to um, you know, encode what message is being transferred when you transfer a message uh, using UAV CAN. And then one part of UAV CAN that sets it apart is its predefined message set. So a set of messages called the public regulated data types uh, are defined by you know, a consortium of developers uh, to create a standard set of messages that can be used across UAV CAN devices. So think of it sort of like a standard language for devices to communicate with each other. Um, each message falls within a subject that you can see here, such as diagnostic, node, or SI, uh, which obviously stands for standard Unix. So you can make your own UAV CAN messages, and there's even an entire section of port IDs uh, set out specifically for that use case, but it's recommended to try and use the public regulated data types or other standards uh, before you make your own vendor or project specific messages. Now, Data Structure Description Language, or DSDL for short, is the language for UAV CAN messages. So in order for UAV CAN, uh, or in order to use UAV CAN messages in LibCanard, um, the library that we're using for uh, the example today, uh, the message must be serialized before being sent on a CAN bus. Um, functions for serializing and deserializing message data uh, are included in DSDL header files, uh, which are compiled using none of it which is a Python tool that allows UAV CAN message files to be compiled into C, C++, uh, headers, and Python source files. So at the bottom here, you can see uh, the uptime, health, and mode uh, fields within a heartbeat message. And when you serialize those, it goes into a CAN frame sort of like this. And that's what gets transferred over the bus. And then when you want to receive data on the other side, uh, let's say you have a TX and an RX node, um, when you receive it, you want to deserialize that data into a human readable format, uh, such as the heartbeat message. Uh, so that's what those functions are for, and that's what compiling DSDL is for. So next, we're going to go over LibCanard uh, and its data structures to give you sort of an overview of how it works. So UAV CAN is a protocol. It's not an implementation. Um, so in order to actually use UAV CAN, you need to have a code library written uh, for the actual protocol. 
So that's where libcanard comes in. It's an implementation of the UAV CAN protocol written in C. So it has a low memory footprint, uh, and therefore it makes sense for low resource applications of UAV CAN, like your flight controllers or other microcontrollers. So for instance, um, libcanard runs on all of these NXP reference designs shown here using our Kinetis and S32K microprocessors. Uh, and it also runs on things like Arduinos or um, you know, Pixhawk uh, and things of that nature. And it's actually really simple to include in your projects. Um, all you have to do is include two source files and then all the header files uh, that you get from compiling your, your UAV CAN messages or DSDL. So libcanard implements the UAV CAN protocol using four key data structures, canard instance, canard transfer, canard frame, and canard RX subscription. So on the next few slides, I'll cover each of these data structures and outline the data that needs to be provided uh, for libcanard to function with these. So before I explain all these, not all of the fields within these data structures are shown uh, because some of them are private and not actually accessible by the user in the application. So I'm just showing you the ones that will be used from an application perspective. So the first uh, data structure that I'm going over is Canard Instance, and it's essentially the heart of LibCanard. It handles transfers, subscriptions, and more. And at the beginning of your LibCanard application, you'll want to create a Canard Instance and provide it with the following data that you see here. Uh, your maximum transmission unit, um, node ID, and functions for memory management. Um, the maximum transmission unit is the number of bytes per CAN frame sent. Um, and then your node ID is actually the node ID for that specific node. Uh, you can set that number to whatever you like as long as it's from 0 to 127. And then memory management is handled by a library called O1Heap, and that's how it's so uh, it's able to run on such resource, resource constrained uh, devices. Um, but there's documentation uh, in the libcanard GitHub repo that shows you how to use O1Heap, and I won't go into uh, specifics on that here. Uh, additionally, Canard Instance holds fields for uh, subscriptions in a transfer queue, and these will be important later when I show uh, sort of a, a diagram of the program. Now, Canard Transfer is a data structure uh, for setting up a UAV CAN message transfer. Each time you want to send or receive a message, you must use a Canard Transfer to facilitate sending that message. So in order to populate a Canard Transfer, you need a few different pieces of data. First, you need a supply timestamp, which is a transmission deadline for trans transferring data, and then a reception time for receiving data. And then a port ID for the message that you want to send. Uh, like I said before, the hard has a port ID of 7509, so that's what you would put there. Um, a transfer ID is a number that increments for each transfer. Uh, you may be familiar with this if you use uh, CAN. Um, basically, it's just there to increment every time you send a message so that uh, devices know the order in which uh, messages are sent. And then you have your payload size and your payload. Um, your payload is your, your message structure that is serialized into bytes um, to be sent over the CAN bus. Now, a, a canard frame holds the CAN ID uh, that's calculated by the canard transfer and the data payload so that the user can create a CAN frame for their specific platform. So in the socket can canard example, we're using a Linux socket can frame structure because we're actually using a virtual can bus within a Linux environment. Um, canard frames are generated by pushing a canard transfer into the transmission queue that sits within the canard instance. So canard frames, uh, like I said, contain can specific data such as uh, timestamp, can ID, and payload. And in this example, we convert canard frames to a socket can frame but you could just convert them to a hardware specific CAN frame structure if you're writing software for like a bare metal microcontroller. And then uh, in order to receive messages, you must subscribe to certain messages. Uh, in order to do that, you need to use something called a Canard RX subscription. So in the receive node, we use a Canard RX subscription uh, for a heartbeat message and then feed that into a function called Canard RX subscribe. Um, and you don't actually have to fill out the data within the structure. The canard rx subscribe function will do that for you. And um, yeah, it just needs the structure in order to, to actually subscribe to, to different messages. 
So now I'm going to do an overview of the socket cam canard example application that I wrote for this presentation and then show you a demo. So first of all, this is an overview of where libcanard fits within the scope of uh, the socket cam canard example. You can see that UAV can sits at the transport layer and then your message files compiled with DSDL uh, or none of that sits at the presentation layer. Uh, and on the right, you can see a simple diagram of the socket can canard example setup. We have a TX node and an RX node that are connected on a virtual CAN bus. And then, um, you know, the TX node is mainly just publishing a heartbeat message. And then the RX node is receiving that heartbeat message. So this diagram looks kind of scary, but I'm going to go through it step by step. So first, uh, whenever you create a UAV CAN, uh, you need to have a canard instance. So you'll create that and fill it out with your node and your maximum transmission unit and the, the memory allocation functions. And then in order to send a heartbeat message, first we're going to take that compiled uh, DSDL header file. And uh, this comes out as, as a, a structure within C. And basically you just fill it out with your uptime, your health, and your mode values. And then you take that structure and you serialize it using uh, a function that's included within that header. So each time you, you actually compile DSDL, it will give you a set of functions that sort of help you facilitate uh, transferring within UAV CAN. So you can use that included serialized function. And then you need to create a canard transfer and populate it with all the necessary data. So your serialized uh, payload and um, you know, your timestamp, transfer ID and all that jazz. Um, and then once you've done that, you can push the canard transfer uh, onto the transmission queue. So as you push messages to the transmission queue, you can go through and sort through them and pop those off. And uh, when you push a canard transfer to the queue, it will actually generate a canard frame, which will hold your can ID, your data, and your size. And then what you can do with the data from there is populate uh, a, a can frame for your specific platform. So with this instance, we're just using the, the Linux socket can uh, frame structure. And uh, once you do that, you can send it on the CAN bus using your hardware and then pop that frame off of the transmission queue. And you've sent a heartbeat message. Now with the receive side, uh, obviously the first thing you wanna do is create a canard instance. Um, and then you wanna create a heartbeat subscription and ask canard instance to subscribe to those heartbeat messages. Um, then for uh, once you have that, all, all that set up, you'll uh, receive a frame from your CAN bus. This will, um, you'll, you'll populate a canard frame with the data from that, that CAN frame, and then ask canard instance to accept the incoming frame using uh, a function called canard rx accept. And this takes an empty canard transfer as well that you pass by reference. And then once you've done that, um, this canard transfer will be filled out with all the necessary data that you got from your transfer node. You can deserialize it, apply that data to a heartbeat data structure, and then print it out to the console. So this is a, a quick demo of the socket can canard example. So we have two virtual UAV can nodes running within a Ubuntu environment. Uh, and this example uses a virtual socket can bus like I said before, and the left terminal is the RX and the right terminal is the TX. So first we build the code using the include make file, and this will create a, uh, a binary folder with two binaries. And then once you're running, uh, you can see that we have the uptime uh, incrementing here in the actual message that's being sent, and it's uh, mirroring over here on the receive side. Um, now in the field, uh, we have a few reference designs that uh, you could use on something like a rover. So for instance, we have the FMUK66 that could be connected with all these other devices, uh, like the UCAN S32K. Um, the UCAN S32K actually has a UAV CAN V1 uh, driver for uh, any PX4 compatible GPS module. Um, and then you could also control a servo with it. You could also do uh, UCAN ESCs um, that are connected to some brushless DC motors, and you could use um, you know, some, you could create your own UAV CAN message essentially, uh, and send data like, let's say, uh, voltage, current, or speed. And then closing thoughts. 
Um, definitely check out the UAV CAN guide and specification by going to uavcan.org and consider using UAV CAN in your projects. And then read through the code in the Socket CAN Canard repository at NXP Hover Games slash Socket CAN underscore Canard on GitHub. And there's a whole bunch of documentation there for you guys to read and uh, you know dig into the example application some more uh, to sort of understand what's happening behind the scenes code wise. And thank you for your time. Um, I think there might be um, no time for questions. So if you have any questions, uh, you can email me at uh, my email. I'll put it in the chat. Um, and I can get back with you on that. So thank you, everybody. Thanks, Andrew. Thanks, Farang. Thanks, Sean. Thanks, Alexis. All right. Bye.